Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are watching this. My name is Marcus Octavius, and you are in the foxhole. Well, we've come to the final stop on our shore leave weekend. This is the foxhole directive. Now, you may be asking, what are foxhole directives? Foxhole directives are basically uh, me flapping my gums. They are uh, instructional videos, opinion pieces, uh, lectures where I share my knowledge, 15 years of performing, entertaining, and teaching, um, just sharing the things that I have seen and my opinions on them. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope you enjoyed the 80s unknown list that dropped Friday night. It was a small hiccup with it, but it did get posted. It is available. And also the Saturday night playlist, which was Shore Leave After Dark. I hope you enjoyed that as well. We're getting into what some people have requested, and for those of you who are on my Facebook page and voiced your opinion, thank you very much. Uh, it was called Drum Circle Etiquette. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but originally my roots started in working drum circles. Um, being in the Society for Creative Anachronism, there are always a drum circle here, feather and yawn. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, that's sort of where I cut my teeth, learned a lot of things, and sort of birthed this, you know, gentleman with fast hands that became a pretty big sensation uh, in a, in a three-state area. You know, one of the running jokes I used to say is, you know, I'm a big deal in Poughkeepsie, you know. Where's Poughkeepsie? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I, I actually have managed to put together what I consider to be a pretty decent list based on my own experience in drum circles. Um, and some of this ranges from like small five people intimate deals to even if you've ever been to Dragon Con, which is the big pop culture convention uh, held in Atlanta on Labor Day, I've helped to facilitate that particular circle. That was an interesting one in and of itself. You've never seen anything until you've seen a Jedi conga line, ladies and gentlemen, and you're the one drumming to it. So let's get right into it. Uh, so a couple of notes here I wanted to jump on. Uh, like I said, just a few things that I feel are helpful. And one is a theory that I've had in general, which is no talent, no problem. What you have to understand about a drum circle is that it's not a all-star jam session. It's not one of these things like when you go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you got these all these you know artists playing one singular song together. Um, it, it's really a people thing, and a lot of people they may not have any musical talent, they may not have any musical background, but they can pick up a drum and beat on it. And that's sort of the idea behind a drum circle. So to to show up and just, you know, not have any talent is not that big of a deal, believe it or not. Uh, I have helped coach a lot of people, you know, into what I like to call the downbeat. If you, you can't go wrong with the downbeat and just, you know, make that work for you and build off of that. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about was the how to find a drum in and of itself. This is probably one of the most popular questions I get. <clears throat> uh, and what I usually tell people is go to a music shop. And believe it or not, that would pre pre probably be a good resource to start at. You don't always have the luxury of being in a town that has a drum store to speak of or one that deals in the... Um, the, the sonic arts, the sonic healing arts, if you will. So you kind of have to go with more traditional uh, music store type places, whether it's a chain or a local. And if in, you talk to a clerk and if they don't sell anything of note, and, and typically they do, uh, one of the big brands out there is Remo, and I usually recommend Remo drums. Uh, they do a great job with them. They are expensive. I will warn you, and I'm getting ready to get into that in a minute. Um, but they're usually pretty good for for all intents and purposes. And if you go to the clerk and you ask him, you know, about drums, then they'll probably direct you. Now, you have to be very specific. If you tell them drums, they're probably going to take you to drum kit stuff. So, you know, you're talking hi-hats, snares, things of that nature. You have to be very specific and talk about percussion instruments. These are typically the instruments that are played by hand, not just drums, but 
maracas and uh, congas and bongas, things of that nature. You, you have to know the lingo, so to speak. So when you go to a shop, ask about percussion instruments, not just drums. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another way to go about it, and it's one that I don't generally recommend uh, because it's of, of a questionable nature, so to speak, uh, is online shopping. Now, if you know of a site that has quality material, uh, one that I usually recommend to people is one called Touch the Earth, then by all means go that route. But if you're going on Amazon and somebody's like trying to sell a drum, and if you want to go that route, then I would pick somebody who's selling something local where you can stop by, look at it, examine it, and then make a decision. Don't just, you know, go online and find something. That's that's not a good way to go about it. You're going to probably get something that you really don't want or something that, you know, you think is this big and it turns out to be this big. So let's say you do get that drum. Um, more than likely is probably a djembe, which is a an African style drum, big drum head. Is what it's what they call a goblet drum because it's actually shaped similar to a goblet. It looks a little like a wine glass, um, a, a wooden wine glass with ropes hanging off of it and this natural head on top. Uh, the the one thing that I like to to lecture people on about hand drumming is beads and baubles. Now, what do I mean by beads and baubles? That means that. Uh, watches, bracelets, and rings, yes, even your wedding ring, need to come off. The thing about it is, is that if you're drumming, these beads and baubles have a tendency to either break, become damaged, or they can damage you. What I usually tell a lot of um, married people who are attached um, to their wedding ring and don't usually take it off is that you have to understand that in the midst of drumming, if you're in a real good circle and you're in the zone, by the time you stop, you're going to look at your hands and they're going to be swollen, which means you probably won't be able to move them. You also may damage the wedding ring. You may also damage the drum head. It's best to take it off. Now, one thing that I believe I was taught a long time ago is that you always carry a chain or some piece of leather or a piece of string with you. And what you do is you loop your wedding ring or rings, if you're wearing that, um, onto the chain or string or whatever and tie it around your neck. So that way you don't lose the rings, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and you're able to still drum and, you know, nothing, nothing is lost, nothing's damaged. You still have a good drum, you still have a good rings, you still have all your bracelets, you know, you still have your wits and you don't have to go to the emergency room and tell the doctor what you were doing. <clears throat> um, one one particular thing I wanted to shoot through real quick is uh, how to hold a drum and usually if it's a drum of a significant size you want to sit it between your legs and cross your legs so the drum is sort of you know going out this direction not necessarily straight up if you're sitting the drum down and you're trying to play it you're muffling the sound I bring this up because you'd be surprised how many people actually sit it down and try to play it you have to hold it at an angle so that the sound can come out the bottom. Um, <clears throat> once you have done all that, you found the drum and you know how to hold it, there's uh, finding the actual circle itself. And what I'm going to do is post a link down here to a site that I found that actually lists a number of circles. And according to the website itself, it has been updated as of this month of this year. So. These are fairly accurate. However, for those of you who are a little bit more local, um, my friend Jeff Holland runs the Our World Festival, and I know that he does a number of circles local to the area. I think in Greenville, South Carolina, he does one for, um, uh, let me think, Picknell Music. Um, he's a good friend of mine. Um, we, we've traded, you know, war stories, if you will, back and forth. Um, but he's somebody I can recommend. His wife, Lori, is, you know, sweet as she can be. She's a talkative sort, but, you know, that, that's all well and good with me. I've also, for those of you uh, more local to the more local to North Carolina, uh, there are at least five different circles that I have found um, in the Charlotte area. And I think one of them is in Gastonia. There's um, also the Drumstrong organization, which was, which is a convention uh, 
geared towards uh, fighting cancer, which I have found to be very interesting. They have a little band right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's uh, lectures, classes, conventions, and what I understand from a from what I've been told, a 12-hour drum circle. I don't have that kind of stamina anymore, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but if you're watching this from someplace other than the Carolinas, uh, the link down here should uh, help you find a drum circle local to your area. Uh, once you've done that, you know, just show up. Uh, bring your drum. If you feel inclined to purchase more percussion-type instruments, like uh, maracas or... Uh, that weird sort of thing that makes a rattling snake sound. I can't think of the name of it. Or even a triangle. I've seen triangles. I've seen violins. I've seen didgeridoos at a drum circle. Didgeridoos. Um, show up and, you know, you're basically there to have fun. It's not a big uh, deal. You're not going to be mic'd up. You know, this is not one of these things where you're going to be on America's Got Talent or anything of that nature. Uh, you're there to have fun, and um, you're, you're there to, to do your thing. Uh, the do's and don'ts that I have, and this is a little bit more leaning towards the etiquette type stuff, um, don't be a thunder drummer. And what I mean by a thunder drummer is somebody who shows up to the circle, and they have all the talent in the world, and you could be in the middle of a real good jam session. And a thunder drummer will show up, and just start wailing away, doing his own thing, and hijacks the circle. That's not cool. That's not what a drum circle is about. Drum circles can be, they can be healing. Drum circles are supposed to be fun. Drum circles are supposed to be about community, and everybody enjoying themselves, and everybody coming together to create this beautiful thing. It's not about feeding your ego. If you see a drum or an instrument that is appealing to you and you want to play it ask permission first if you don't know who owns it don't touch it i have actually been to a drum circle and my mother god rest her soul had actually purchased me a very expensive remo drum and that thing got gone unfortunately um would i still go to a drum circle absolutely because i believe that at their heart of hearts they are good things but you do have to be wary and you have to respect people's property. That's the thing about it. Don't just pick it up. Now, if you know somebody, that may be another thing. But if you if you see an instrument, you don't know who it belongs to and you want to play it, wait till that person comes back. Then ask them. Ask for permission. Uh, if you show up to a drum circle, try to learn something. You know, like I said, asking about, you know, the instruments is good. Uh, if there's a particular rhythm or a particular thing you want to try, you know, ask around. See if somebody knows. You know, this is supposed to be, you know, an enriching and enlightening environment. And there's the opportunity for you to walk away having learned something that you didn't know had you shown up. Uh, again, you know, no talent, no problem. This is, like I said, this is not a showcase of the immortals or anything like that. You're there to have fun. So have fun. You know, relax, enjoy yourself. You know, if you feel compelled to get up and dance, get up and dance. Nobody's going to really judge you. And if they do, they'll probably get kicked out anyway, because that's not cool. Uh, like I mentioned, drums can heal. There has been uh, some, a few studies done here and there that suggest that uh, if you drum consistently, it can help, you know, heal things. I've even heard stories that um, consistent drumming can help if you have cancer. So whether you believe in these things or not, um, drumming, as far as I have seen, and I and I can attest to this, can put you in a better mood. I mean, we're talking about you taking all your anger out on something that's built to take it. So you can walk away, you know, in a much better mood from all things. And finally, respect the circle. One of the things that always, you know, bothers me is like, you know, you got thunder drummers, you got people walking away with instruments. Respect the circle. The circle is not about you. The circle is about everybody it's about everything it's about putting forth good energy so that everybody can have fun and enjoy themselves and just release some of that tension that they may have built up over the week and you know just to to relax you know a, a drum circle is not a place to to feed your ego it really is not it's 
it's better than that. And, and you know, you, you look at the world nowadays and one of the things that I think we could all use, unfortunately, social distancing would make it very difficult, is a lot more drum circles and a lot less drinking. So, that is Drum Circle Etiquette. Please like, share, subscribe. All my links are down below. The, uh, the Drum Circle Finder link is also down here with my Facebook, my Twitter, and my email. I'm Marcus Octavius, and thank you for the Shore Leave Weekend.